Hello and welcome. My name is Carmen Lamson and I will be your host for today's webinar. For today's webinar, we will be using the Slido Embedded app for polls and Q&A. Look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen. You can also participate on your mobile device by scanning the QR code. Going now on now is a Slido poll on how 2024 has gone for you so far. Hopefully it's been wonderful. Be sure to stick around to the end of the webinar for a chance to enter our drawing for a cool WebEx prize. Pay attention there, there, because there's a fun quiz to qualify you for the prize. Good luck. Leading today's webinar is leader of the developer evangelism team, Adam Weeks. Joining him is senior developer evangelist, Phil Belanti, and App Hub and partner support aficionado, Joe Zanini. We also have some special guests joining us today for our partners, Novalox. But before we get into all the fun, Phil will share some exciting things to look out for. So take it away, Phil. Okay, thank you. And let's get some news going here. Um, so you have to do some quick WebEx developer content updates, uh, announcements that we'd like to share with you before we get to the uh, main presentation for creating widgets in WebEx Contact Center. So um, everything that I'm going to mention here is going to be found near the top of the blog section on the developer portal. So that's developer.webex.com slash blogs. Um, lots of good content on there. But uh, but first, uh, my colleague Joe Zanini, who's one of our panelists, I think he's live in San Jose today. Um, he created a great guide for administrators and developers that are working with WebEx service apps. So uh, service apps are relatively new still. So for those who aren't familiar with them, uh, you know, service apps are uh, the application type that's tied to a particular organization. So it's unlike a WebEx integration that's associated with a, a WebEx user. Uh, so this makes them really ideal for you know, reporting use cases, compliance, and other mission critical administrator integrations that, you know, that run on a long term basis. Um, so Joe breaks it all down for us in this really comprehensive guide. So just be sure to check that out. Uh, but next, uh, one of the WebEx engineers, uh, Kasava Krishnan Madhavan, uh, he wrote a helpful article on how to utilize Yarn workspaces with the WebEx calling SDK. Uh, so this is for managing the mono repo, uh, enabling streamlined package management and fostering code sharing across you know, all the different packages. So he highlights how this approach helps to reduce the bundle size, improve load times, allowed for better versioning and dependency management. So it's a super informative article uh, for SDK developers uh, to check out. Um, and then finally, um, the presenter of this webinar, Adam Weeks, he posted a nice summary of the WebEx for developer sessions that are being presented over at Cisco Live in Amsterdam. Uh, that starts in less than two weeks, uh, February 5th. So uh, there's going to be a bunch of classroom sessions, hands-on workshops that's scheduled inside the DevNet area of the show. Um, you know, we're also bringing along some of the awesome engineers to help uh, staff our exhibitor booths inside the DevNet area and inside the World Solutions. So. Um, if you're planning to make the trip to Amsterdam for Cisco Live, we'd love to see you at some of those sessions. Uh, and inside the WebEx areas over there, we'll be hanging out. Um, so that's all the we got here for the news this month. Um, but I'm going to hand it over to Adam Weeks to get us going with uh, widgets and uh, or header widgets and WebEx contact centers. So, Adam, the floor is yours. All right. Great. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, so welcome everyone to, to our webinar. We're excited to have you here today. A little bit about myself. Uh, uh, I've been with Cisco almost eight years now, uh, joined by and uh, was building on, on the, the widgets team, the, the WebEx widgets team. So this is uh, you know a topic that's near and dear to my heart, showing the widgets in, inside Contact Center. Uh, also was working on the, the JS SDK. Uh, and it was excited to see about the new, uh, the calling SDK that Phil just announced about. So we do have a Slido poll. We want to try to get to the feedback on, on everyone. We have, have had a few different contact center webinars going on. Uh, we wanted to check to see where everybody's at so I can kind of base my content on, on what, on where everyone is at. Uh, and want to know if, have you watched our previous contact center webinars? Uh, if you've watched some of them, all of them, or none of them? Looks like we've got quite a few. So 
some newbies too. So yeah, that's that's great to see. Uh, you know, welcome, and uh, we're excited to have you on our on our journey into contact center development. So it looks like the least amount is the people have seen all of it. So I'll make sure I'll I'll make sure we don't uh, try to assume any knowledge going into this. So thank you, Phil, for that that poll. Uh, yeah, so like I, like I mentioned, we have had a couple of different webinars uh, for contact center developers. You can find all of our previous webinars on developer.webex.com slash webinars. So that's on, on our developer portal. If you go up to the top, you, you can easily access it from the from the top navigation menu. Uh, you can watch them. We, we actually record all of them in the WebEx product vidcast. And now even it's even better by using all these AI tools. It, it, that uh, you can rewatch these and have the chapters and go right back to the, the content that you're looking for in these webinars. And it, and it makes it really, really powerful. I'm really excited to, to partner with Vidcast to be able to showcase all of our previous webinars on our, on our developer portal. So like I said, we've had two different webinars. We've had like one is like a contact center overview from our from our contact center team. And then just a couple of months ago, we just we talked about all of the different uh, types of wit custom widgets you can build with, with contact center. So if you're not if you're not familiar with it, what are desktop widgets? So desktop widgets uh, are are the ability to configure your contact center agent desktop uh, with any sort of external information and and views that you will, and, and custom views that you would like to see. Um, the contact center comes fully functional as is, but if you've got other things you need to integrate and bring into to your contact center to show show to your agents to get. Uh, information, things like CRMs, uh, even like just quick information and access. You know, the, these types of tools that, that are what you, allows you to bring those types of information into the agent desktop and fully customize it exactly how you want your your uh, contact center to look like. Um, and once you get done with building your with your app and, and your widget or anything with within the WebEx Contact Center, uh, if you want the the ability for your app to go to all of our WebEx customers, uh, we we highly recommend you taking a look at our App Hub. And our App Hub is is the way to that our customers and WebEx users can can bring in your integrations and applications into WebEx. And we've got uh, quite a few Contact Center. Web app, uh, web apps on App Hub right now. Um, if you're interested and you actually want to be part of the the App Hub, we can actually we we do have a, a form on our developer portal that will will start the engagement with our business development manager. Uh, they'll reach out to you and talk talk to you about getting into the App Hub for for your app. And I'm privileged to have uh, one of our one of our App Hub partners. And actually, you can see on the uh, on that screenshot right there, we've got uh, Noblebox. Here to join us and tell us a little bit about their product. Hi, I'm Martin Katz. Hey. I am a vice president of Noblebox, and uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I really appreciated what you said about the desktop because uh, configuring that desktop is what Noblebox has been doing for many, many years. We basically built a, a drag and drop system to do exactly that. And kind of taking that into context and then adding in the other component that's really important to us is be able to bring back in systems in, integrate that and display this information on the desktop is really the power of what we offer. So being able to configure your desktop on the WebEx contact center side, I, I certainly understand the power of that. I'm sure people that have used it and uh, can make it help make it easier for the agent to do their job. That's what we sell. And we think that's the most important component of what we offer. So. Great value there, uh, absolutely. So I, I kind of want to talk to you about Noblevox today. Uh, we were one of the early, uh, I think, uh, apps on, on the App Hub. And I think uh, I wanted to say that it was so easy. The people contacted us from the team and they pretty much walked us through it and made sure we had everything that we needed and helped us configure it, help us uh, display our ad and did everything they could to make it make it work out and get it up there and because we have multiple products so they they had helped us align all that it was great they made it really easy and we were able to get it up quickly and and we have had some rewards already from it so we're really happy to be there and happy to be there too so thank you very much so uh basically this is our product this is our eight what we call it agent accelerator and it's based around being able to configure that desktop and be able to make it powerful the whole idea that we 
propose is to make it easy for the agent by putting everything on a single screen and showing all the back end integrations as kind of like a one, single product. And our ability to be able to do that is kind of what our whole business is built around worldwide. We have about 350 installs uh, currently growing every month, obviously. And what's really been powerful for us is creating these relationships also with these back end integration partners. So we're basically uh, um, taking that information, displaying it on the screen, as I said, making it easy for the agent, doing all this with a, a system that we developed to be able to, to build these. And then if you, you took kind of like our system and then added on the system for, that comes with WebEx Contact Center, you would have an unbelievably powerful uh, desktop. Everything right there configured for your agent's needs exactly the way that you want it to be so they can be most effective. So that's basically what we're looking at today right here. And this is our main product we've been selling for many years. And uh, I'm gonna introduce Michael Martin, who is uh, part of my team, and he's gonna work through the next slides. I've also got with me today, Amol Jane. He is our product manager, and he certainly can add a bunch of technical aspects to this to help you guys uh, know what we kind of, the troubles and things that we went through to kind of make it work and how we can build on what we've done so far. So Michael, I don't know if you or Amol wants to jump in uh, and maybe add to what I said already. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Great job, uh, Marty. Yeah, if we want to just go to the next slide, I, I do have a couple of slides here that I want to go through. Um, what Novobox does is really um, we, we verticalized kind of a templates of, of agent desktops. Um, we work within uh, WebEx Contact Center, so we're actually embedded. Um, we're kind of in a full screen here, but, uh, it, you know, we can adapt to fit within the WebEx Contact Center framework. Um, what we are able to do with our backend integrations, we have uh, templates and kind of predefined gadgets that we've created in the past, and we can really give that agent an, an optimized view uh, to, to integrate into those backend systems. Uh, so we do a lot within the banking sector. So we are a Jack Henry uh, partner. We work with uh, Fiserv FIS um, for credit unions and banking. Um, and, and we can take information from multiple sources and put that within the agent desktop. Not only are we able to read information from these backend systems, but we can also write back. So if we need to create a, a gadget to do a stop payment, uh, to put a pause on a, a credit or debit card, uh, those are the things that, that we're able to do through, through our tool and through our product embedded within WebEx. So if we want to go to the next slide, we, we have another one here that kind of goes over our, our healthcare offering. Uh, we have uh, um, some out of the box integrations. We are a partner with Epic. Uh, we work with Cerner and uh, all scripts. Uh, again, to give that, um, that healthcare agent in this scenario an optimized view of their patient. If we need to look at upcoming appointments, if we need to do uh, cancel or update an appointment or, or schedule anything out, we can you know, have that within our within our desktop um, within WebEx CC. So those are the two ways that we're able to embed uh, within uh, WebEx Contact Center or two verticals. Uh, we have a very flexible product. So depending on really what the needs are, uh, we, we can easily design a solution for that and, and talk to the WebEx Contact Center um, you know, events to, to show the agent or dictate how that gets populated to the agent. Uh, the other way we work, if we want to go into our, our last slide here, um, utilizing the WebEx Contact Center APIs, we, we can also do what we call our Smart CTI connector. Um, this is really big for us within the help, uh, Epic environment in healthcare um, so that we can actually do those screen pops directly into Epic Hyperspace or Hyperdrive. And, and we're doing this utilizing the WebEx APIs and having that uh, embedded um, um, call control client um, and tightly integrated with, with the CRM, or in this case, Epic. We also work with all the leading CRMs uh, to deliver the same type of product. Um, so that's kind of high level what we have on the App Hub today. Um, I did have uh, Animal Jane, he's uh, head of product here uh, in the US for Novovox. So I, I just want to see if he wants to add anything else from a, a developer perspective. Uh, me and Marty, we, we, we can sell this all day, but I, I think the, the real technical brain uh, is on the call here. So, um, Animal, if there's anything you want to add as far as, uh, you know, what we went through to, to publish things on the, the App Hub, or the type of integrations that, that we've done with WebEx, I think that, that might be valuable to add here. 
Sure, Michael. Thanks. Thanks for uh, for all the content which you presented today. From a technical perspective, we are leveraging all the WebEx APIs for building our integration. Like we are using the WebEx call control APIs for providing the call controls inside Apex. So like the smart CTI connector, which you see right now on the screen, this has been built using the desk, the call control APIs from WebEx. And for the call events, we are using the, the desktop notification toolkit from WebEx. Similarly, for embedding our applications inside WebEx, we are a we are a web based application hosted on a windows server so and that can be embedded within the webex framework as a gadget as well and can be controlled from the from the webex admin as well with respect to the to the app hub submission so it was a very smooth process from cisco wherein we leveraged all the 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 already provided apis with detailed information and uh, we were able to create the apps with with very less intervention and and they were after that they, we we went through a review with the cisco team and we were finally published on the app hub so it was a very smooth and uh, hurdle free process for us yes great that's we love we love hearing that yeah um, it, had you had a chance to connect with our developer support team as well while you were building Yes, that was very, very pleasant experience and we were able to get all the information which we required. Thank Perfect. you. Very much. Well, well, thank you so much for telling us about your application and, you know, people can, you can find a Novavox on, on our app hub. Uh, any closing comments, Martin, Michael, or Noj, anybody? No, thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, we've been a Cisco partner for many, many years, uh, working obviously in, with Finesse and then transferring over to WebXCC. I believe, and I may be wrong about this, but we were one of the very first companies to integrate WebXCC and do an integration with it. So uh, we've been working with it a long time and um, we've had great success with it with the customers and we've had great success with it, even doing the upgrades from Finesse to, to uh, WebXCC. So, so far everything's really been, it's been, it's been very good. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and joining us. Um, actually, one question having... came in from the audience uh, regarding this. Should, should we do that one now, Adam? Sure. Yeah, uh, this came in here. Is, is Novelbox Agent Accelerator an alternative for agent desktop for certain use cases and industries? Maybe a complement more than a replacement, I would think. Amal, what do you, what do you, what's your thought there? It's more of a complement. Like, we can be embedded inside the Linux PC desktop. With the, within the WebEx contact center desktop. And it primarily depends upon where the agent primarily wants to live or primarily wants to use. If they have other, uh, if they are, if they are primarily living inside the agent within the WebEx contact center desktop, then we can be embedded inside the WebEx contact center desktop. If the agent wants to live in the, within the CRM, like for example, all his major activities and all his work require him to be logged in into the CRM at all times, then we can also be embedded inside the, the CRM through our smart CTI embeddable framework. Yeah, I, I would also add one more piece. You know, Michael, one of the things Michael had mentioned about the size, that we can manipulate the size in order to be able to take full advantage of the functionality that's in WebXCC. So you actually can have the best of both worlds simultaneously as well. So there's a lot of op options there. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you all for having us. Great to be here and yeah. looking forward to a lot more with uh, WebXCC. Thank you. All right. So let's get into the meat of the of the topic here. And what we're going to be building today is a, uh, a header widget. So the first thing about the header widgets and widgets in general are there. There's different layouts and areas that you can configure. Uh, the you know the very first thing is you can change that contact center desktop title and logo up there on the on the, on the left side. Um, then that horizontal header that stays with you. That's what we're going to be working on today. Um, the workspace and the navigation bar. You may have seen some of those things uh, on Novavox as well. That they're they're using all the entire contact center desktop area that you can configure. But today we're going to be focusing on that horizontal top level information on there and, and with header widgets. So this really is just a small, uh, you know, just a small about, I think it's about 60 pixels high place for you can get quick information and actions that your agents can do. Uh, what we've seen things be, being used for here is some things like agent status displays, 
Uh, if there's an inbound call in front, if there's a quick pop that you need to show in that screen, you can. Um, network capacity, we've seen people utilize that to show how, how uh, utilized their network is. Um, and even things is just as simple as, as, as weather or news, so like your company news. Um, and actually, that's what we're going to be building today is we're going to showcase our company news, uh, our header widget that we've got is a, it's an RSS feed reader. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can configure widgets. You can have a widget that's an iframe widget that just basically embeds that uh, a view into your own web application. But today we're actually going to go a step further and go into the web components and, and showcase what you can do with web components. So if you have a, a web component that's already pre-built that you're using in your application, it doesn't have to be built specifically for Contact Center. If it's available on a CDN, you can pull that in and 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 embed it into your Contact Center agent desktop. It also has it also has the ability to work with our SDK and the store variables that gets you data from Contact Center and going back and forth between uh, your widget and the Contact Center agent desktop, where the iframe just is basically just a view. And um, getting that data over to your to your widget is is what we use. You can use that store. This is what we were talking about earlier when I was saying you can use SDK or the store. You can access all of the data that you have for your WebEx agent uh, through this store variable. So when you're configuring your your widget in, in the layout file, you can pass it a variable that gets you gets that information directly from the contact center store. Uh, one of the big things that we see, and actually I think is a requirement for the App Hub as well, is to utilize this this dark mode. Um, and so that that kind of well, what it does is, if your agent switches over to a dark mode, it makes it sends that information to the widget that tells you that yes, your hey the agent's in dark mode. You should probably style the widget to 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 have that dark mode theme so it doesn't stand out as bad. Uh, we're going to show show you how that works in just a second. Real quick overview so for those who didn't join us on the on the other calls, how to get started with your contact center application development. Uh, the first thing to do uh, that I highly recommend is getting your developer sandbox uh, through our contact center developer portal. This will allow you, this will give you an agent, a an admin, and an entire org that you can start playing around with and building on that you don't have to use your production code and don't have to worry about stepping on any toes or requiring any sort of uh, you know access to, to production environments that if, if when you're trying to just try things out and, and develop. So I would, first things first, I would highly recommend getting a developer sandbox and get started. And um, then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go into, we've got a ton of sample code uh, up on our public GitHub. So if you wanna take a look at our sample code for all of the things context interrelated, the URL is here, uh, we'll have that we should have that in the, in the chat and as well as we'll have it in our, in our forums for this for this webinar. So if you don't get this URL right here, you'll be able to get access to it. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take that sample code that has our RSS header widget and we're gonna and throw it into a an existing uh, contact center uh, agent uh, a desktop. So I've got right now, I've got my, uh, I've got my sandbox ready to go, and we're gonna start playing with it. Um, what we're gonna do today over the build, so we're gonna have a live build here. We've got a pretty good amount of times here. I'm gonna hopefully get through most of these things, but um, we've got a development environment we're gonna get set up. We're gonna show you how that, that web component looks like when it's outside the contact center and how you can interact with it. Then we're gonna put that web component up on a CDN, and we're gonna tell our, our desktop layout to use that CDN. And then we're actually gonna log into the agent desktop and take a look at it, make sure it looks okay. And then we're gonna, if we have enough time, we're gonna try to configure it and, and throw a little bit, a couple extra variables at it. So why don't I, we'll get started here uh, at building this thing. Uh, one thing I did wanna let you know is that what we're gonna be building today is, is gonna be through a, um, a DevNet learning lab. And this is a brand new DevNet learning lab that will be coming out shortly after Cisco Live. So you guys are getting a little sneak preview of it right now. Uh, but once it's available, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna publish it out on, on, onto our, um, onto the community forums for this for this webinar. You'll be able, you'll be first to know. So if you follow that thread on our, on our community forums about the webinar, we'll let you know as soon as that 
learning lab is available for you to actually walk through all this together by yourself. So right now I have logged into our DevNet Learning Lab. I've got it all set up and I'm just going to, let's go ahead and bring this, increase the size here just a little bit. So if this is your first time ever seeing a DevNet Learning Lab, um, this is, it's very exciting. It's a great tool to go in and start learning about, about tools, not just WebEx, but Cisco, all of Cisco. We've got quite a few different WebEx Learning Labs out there. But what I really like about this is it gives you your own development environment when you start up. You don't have to have to worry about setting up anything locally. You can do this all through a web browser. Uh, so if you don't have access to doing to set up and pulling code down onto your local machine, you only have a web browser, you can do it all through the Learning Lab, which is really exciting. So the first step is, uh, you know, we've got we've got our sandbox, we have our admin account, and we have our agent account. So we are ready to go to get started with this learning lab. Uh, we've got our virtual machine here. Uh, we've got our file editors, and we have the terminal into our virtual machine. So the first thing I'm going to do here, and let's uh, let's just pray to the demo gods that all of the network connections are all working correctly through external. GitHub and NPM, uh, <laughs> I always have to make sure that this is ready to go. All right, so we've got our, our repo cloned from our WebEx samples. And actually, if you go, if I hit refresh here, you can see now our file, our folder is ready to go. I'm gonna change into that directory and I'm gonna run an install on our packages. This should take, shouldn't take too long. We're gonna pull that down to th this way. This thing is all ready to go for us once it once we uh, start moving into our development stage. Now, but before we do that, what we're going to do is we're actually I'm gonna log into our control hub and I'm gonna show you uh, what it, what it looks like to be a, a WebEx Contact Center admin. Uh, I'm what, actually what a a quick little note here on this one, I'm gonna log in as an incognito account, so I don't have to sign out of my Cisco account on the DevNet Learning Labs. So I'm gonna open an incognito window to our admin page, and I'm going to log in as our contact center admin. Hopefully I won't make you too dizzy by switching back and forth between the browsers. I just wanna make sure I'm not skipping over any steps here. So we're gonna explore the con control hub and getting into our, so once you're into control hub, you can take a look at what the contact center controls are and the administration page. If you are familiar with contact center administration, uh, you, may not be fam you may not be aware that it has now, has in the progress of migrating all the way over to the, our WebEx control hub. So there's no longer a separate administration area for contact center, it's all in control hub. And if we go into, look down under services here, you can see that contact center now has its own area in the control hub. So if I go here, I can take a look at my agents, you know, do you just, take, just Take a quick browse through the control hub for contact center admin, tons of things that you can configure. We're not really gonna be doing much in the configuration besides changing our desktop layout today, but there is a ton of things that you can do uh, in getting into the contact center administration. So that is good. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna sign out of the admin. and go to next. And you'll be able to, and we're gonna take a look at the agent desktop and what the, what it looks like for the agent when they get into the agent desktop. So I'm gonna log into the incognito window here as well. Scroll down to my agent, sign in. Let's make sure I don't, Miss any steps here? All right. So the agent, when you when you get your sandbox, your agent is actually going to have a, a, a an extension assigned to them. So when you when the agent first signs into the contact center, they're going to ask what extension is, and that way that contact center can route to that to that agent. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and submit. Great right here. You see right now we're not. This is I mean it, 
that's very it's still very bare bones with, because it is our our test environment uh, in our, in our sandbox and that um, you know we don't have any we don't have any widgets custom widgets or anything laid out um, and if, if we were to get a call in we would you'd be able to see and manage that call from here we're not going to do that through the year we don't have enough time to kind of go over that but yeah once you get your sandbox play you can definitely play it around with it and try it out so we. We've made sure we are able to log in with our administrator, and now we've made sure we are able to log in with our agent. Agent desktop is all set up. We are good to go. There is a uh, contact center set up in an administrative guide that I highly recommend checking out. It, it is very, uh, very in overview. There's a, there's a ton of information on this. So uh, if the, the link on here, you'll go through and it's even taking a long time just to load just how, how big this, this thing is. But there's a ton of things that you can do in this guide. Um, I have it jumping directly to the layouts file. So we're, it, what we're gonna do next is kind of go through and take a look at those layouts. Oh, actually I jumped ahead of myself. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take a look at our, our, at our uh, web component. So our RSS header widget sample code is just basically a, a web component that loads a uh, RSS feed and has support for light and dark mode. It's really the only functionality that it has. Um, and we'll take a look at that, what it looks like when it's not inside the agent desktop. So I'm in the right folder. In our sample code, we have a quick little web server that will serve up just that web component so you can take a look at it and interact with it. Uh, through the WebEx, uh, the DevNet Learning Labs, it does provide you with a publicly accessible URL for your lab. And, and so now I've, you see I've got this web host started on localhost on port 8080. But if I click on this little toolbox here, this gives you your URLs for your, for your specific lab. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this lab, show you what, what's being served from our lab. And so here's that, that page I was talking about, it's just, the it's just the web component here, uh, and then some ways to function to interact with it. So you can right now it's it's loading the RSS feed from our, our blogs. If you want to, it, it makes it clickable that you can go through, or you can scroll through the different ones. Uh, we do have light and dark mode support. This is going to be coming in handy shortly. And then if we want to change the feed address, uh, let's take a look and let's grab uh, the Hacker News. RSS feed and change it over. And you can put any feed that you want in here uh, as long as it's an RSS feed. And so now we've got our Hacker News feed is being displayed here in this component. So this is a way, you know, so if you've got this component on your, like on your internet or in your local uh, server uh, in your company portal, and you wanna have this added into the, into the WebEx Contact Center, it's not very difficult. You can, you can take just the code that's already available as long as you put it up on a CDN, a public accessible URL, you'll be able to pull that into the WebEx Contact Center. And that's what we're gonna show next is how to actually serve that, serve this code through a URL. So I'm gonna stop that web server now and go to the next. And so now I'm gonna serve it through the CDN. So this will pull in, that this way makes WebEx Contact Center pull in that code for that JavaScript to be able to make that web component accessible for WebEx Contact Center. So if I start that up, and then I'm gonna go to my, back to my URL, my public URL that I've got, and I'm gonna look for this file, rss-widget.js. So I'm gonna add rss-widget.js. You should see just a raw JavaScript code. So at the end, this code is what makes that web component available. And what we're, what we're gonna do is take that code and tell WebEx Contact Center to load that code in so that, that web component is available for our agents to add into the, the desktop. I'm gonna stop this server here. And one thing we didn't mention uh, is that the, uh, let me close this so we get a little bit better view. Is that the the whole configuration for the for the desktop layout 
is done through this file called layout JSON. And so if I open this up, we've got a sample one here that you can utilize that already has our component in here. But it's a, it's a large JSON file that configures everything that the agent desktop sees. So we're in the agent area. We're looking at the advanced header and some information here. So this is the component. So this is the web component name that we register, that JavaScript file registers to the to global web components. So RSS widget is the name. The script is the script value is where you're actually loading the CDN from. So this is what tells you, this says, all right, this is where I'm gonna get that web component from. Uh, and you see in our code right now, it's saying localhost. We wanna change that to using a, to use that public URL that we just, where we just accessed. So I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna scroll down here, make sure I'm not skipping ahead of myself yet. All right, so now I'm gonna grab this URL. I'm gonna copy it and paste it into the script property here. So this is telling, this is gonna tell Contact Center, load this script from this URL and, and add this web component into the advanced header area. Now, the one tricky thing that, that we had to figure out here was, was how, do, how do we get this file from the learning lab that we just edited onto our local machine so that we can upload it to our control hub? And we just kind of tricked it here and we've created a, another web server that will just, this is gonna serve up this layout JSON file. I'm gonna go back here, open the layout JSON. And you see, this is the file, this is the, that file that we are looking at that we're editing right here. This is that file, this, uh, that's all this is, is it's just accessing that file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save this file to my local machine, save page as. I'm gonna save it on my desktop as a file name layout. I'm gonna replace the one that's there. And now I've got that file on my machine. And now it is gonna be ready for future upload to the control hub, like it says here on step three. Uh, I'm gonna stop this layout server and restart our CDN server so that URL works for the, that, that we just added into the advanced header area. And now we're gonna log back into the control hub and upload that file. So I'm gonna open the login to control hub. As the admin. And Phil, let me know if there's any questions or anything uh, that people have had coming in, I, I'll, uh, we can stop and pause it as needed. I don't have anything right now, but uh, I will let you know. Okay. Otherwise it's just me talking to myself Wait, as I do. All um, this. I did have <laughs> one just come in here. Um, any tip to easily navigate through the layout JSON to add custom widgets and gadgets without breaking things? Um, the, it, it has to be a, a a, a regular JSON file, and um, what I, I use Visual Studio Code, and their uh, their JSON editor within Visual Studio Code that has the the uh, area browser that you can kind of get to the different areas within the file. Because yeah, it is a huge file. I think it's like 10k of raw JSON, so it it is it's pretty massive, and uh, yeah, that's the best way that I, I have found to actually go in and editing those files. And if I, if I may, how I yeah. do it is uh, th there's browser versions of JSON viewers that do the same thing that the Visual Studio uh, plugins do. So if you don't have access to Visual Studio code or you're not a coder, but you're trying to understand the JSON file, you can also use various web versions of JSON viewers and just upload the, download the file from Control Hub upload it on the web and it'll 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 create a more uh, user friendly uh, experience and, and, and it's the same with with the visual studio plugin as well yeah yeah thanks Jeff okay and um, right. um, okay sorry go ahead nope
Yeah. Uh, so now now we're we've got that layout file. We're going to upload it to our. You know, we got logged into Control Hub into the Contact Center uh, area. Scroll down to the the you know the desktop experience. So this is where you can configure all the agent desktop experience. We're going to change that layout. We're going to create a new layout, and we're going to call it the RSS header. You can give it a description if you like, um, and then which teams that you want assi to assign this to. Uh, let's see here. It's not letting me do. It's not pulling that in. So we'll go back here in just a second and assign it to the team. Um, but here we're going to replace the file. Got to go to our desktop. And for, sometimes it doesn't like the format that I download in, but it will still take it. I'm picking that layout JSON. I've got the RSS widget. I'm just taking a look here to make sure this is the right one. We've got the script loading from our, our dev server. And I'm going to open and create it. Oh, I know why this because I using the same same thing I had before. Create. So I just call it header two. I've got a few other layouts. This is still this is my uh, sandbox environment. I've got a few different areas here. Um, now I can. Here we go. This uh, for some reason it wasn't letting me pick it before, but now I'm going to pick it and assign this to a team. So this says, all right, this layout is specifically for this team uh, instead of the default layout. Uh, so I've got the team, the team already is set up with it. And when it came with the sandbox, I'm going to assign that team to it. So now we've got that file uploaded to our control hub. Let me scroll and make sure I don't, I didn't miss anything else. We talked the desktop layouts, creating the layout, uploaded it and saved. Perfect. Well, let's go back in our control hub. We will sign out. So our agent and admin accounts don't conflict in this incognito window. And next. So now we're going to test, test that widget, make sure it appears properly in the agent desktop. So we're going to go to our agent desktop. As it loads in, I'm going to log in as the agent. Crossing our fingers to the demo guys that we uploaded the right layout file and configured it properly. If anyone's worked with desktop layouts, you know what I'm talking about. Yep, and there they are. So now we've got our, our widget here. Our header widget is up in here in the header area for our agent. We've got some news and they've got some information of, you know, they've had the other controls for WebEx. We've got the news here. Let me make sure I'm not missing any steps. Oh yeah, so let's try the theme change. So when we talked about that dark mode, if we go in here, if we have an agent that prefers to have their, their desktop in dark mode, we switch it to dark mode. And you see that our header changed to the dark mode theme as well. We did that through that store variable. Remember, we talked about that store variable being able to pass in. Uh, if we take a look at that JSON file, you see that there's a property called dark that our web component is looking at, and we're sending it this store app dark mode. So once the dark mode, that this will change with how the agent configures it. So you see, I know, as I go back, this means dark. This is going to be sending dark defaults. And this will be sending dark to true. So it's pretty interesting. It's a good way to be able to have that connection without pulling in the whole SDK. If you just needed just, like I said, we just, we just needed just this one variable to know about the agent desktop status, we can do that. And let's see here. So we've got that running. We've got the, the header widget running. Now we can try, let's see, what, what are we at on time here? We got 15 minutes. I think we should we should be able to try out. We're going to change the RSS feed here, like we like we showed over there. Yeah, we'll see if we can do it. Well, I'll give myself five minutes, and if we we've run out of time, we uh, you won't miss anything on the quiz here. So let's see. We'll go back to our layout file, like I said, and you see we just talked about that dark property. Well, now we've got this RSS property too that gets fed into the, the web component. 
So instead of the uh, the WebEx uh, blog feed, I'm going to give it the Hacker News feed. And this could be your company's news feed if they've got it, uh, any sort of market updates or something that you want to have in here. That will work as well. You know, whatever you whatever you want to do, you can you know if if you want to have news being displayed, you can use this as kind of a, a template to get started on it. I wouldn't say that this widget is production ready, but it is a it's it's good enough to get you a good understanding of what you can do. So let's go here. Let's serve our let's download our layout file again. Refresh. I'm gonna check and make sure it's updated correctly. Yep, that we've got the. Y Combinator, let's save. And replace it. And then we will go to, we've got it downloaded. Now we gotta go back and upload it to Control Hub. Remember we, the Control Hub is where you configure how to, um, where those layouts are. I'm going to sign out of this so we don't get any sort of conflicts from our agent being logged in. It's fun trying to figure out how to manage the all the different instances. Uh, I do recommend if you're doing a lot of development here to set up a few, if you use Google Chrome or any other things, set up multiple profiles and have them be logged in so they don't, so you don't have to do this back and forth like I'm doing right here. Uh, so I'm going to log in as the admin. Upload that new layout file. And go to contact center. Or con Desktop layouts. We're going to go to our RSS header layout. Replace that JSON file. Make sure that's got the right feed. Yep, feed looks good. Open, save. All right, valid JSON, worked well. Let's log out. And we need to res, oops. Restart the server for our CDN. And we need to log into the agent desktop. Yeah, see, I didn't close that one properly. And it started yelling at me. <laughs> so we'll close the window and go back in. Sign in as the agent. Now, hopefully what we'll see is our, our header widget will be updated with the new URL. Oh, there we go, Hacker News is loaded up in there. So what we did, what we've done today, you know, we've, we've pulled down the, the sample code, we've made some changes to it, we served it up on the CDN, we took that URL and took it to the layout and uploaded that layout to our control hub so uh, for our agents to be able to use. And then we uh, tested it out, changed some parameters on it. And we've got a, a, our first header widget embedded into our WebEx contact center. So that includes the portion of the, of the code side. So that's, uh, you know, once this learning lab is published, this, you know, this is on an integration environment. It's not quite, it's not ready yet for prime time. Uh, we'll be doing a big launch of, with it for Cisco Live, but since you all joined us with the webinar, I figured I'd give you a little sneak preview into it. Um, I do want to go back real quickly, some more resources you can do to continue on uh, your journey. Um, I think we've got all these URLs we'll be dropping to you, but you know, we've got our developer portal, the developer community for Contact Center, and actually we've got on the Cisco community, there's two different areas for developers. There's the contact center developers and the WebEx developers uh, for the you know the me messaging meetings and calling side. 
Um, so we've got that available for you. That sample code that we showed you, so, so that was where that the sample code that we just pulled down, that header widget lives on there. We got frequently asked questions. Uh, our developer support team that you heard about from, from Noblevox, they're right, waiting for your questions around the clock and ready to help you in your development journey. And then finally, that WebEx app hub for, for Contact Center. So I think we've got all those. And now what you may be here for, the, the quiz to give away some pr a, a quick WebEx prize here to see how well you're paying attention. So Phil, you're gonna launch the quiz for us. Give everybody some time to join in. Yeah. The, I'm happy all the NPM installs and all the ports forwarding and DevNet Learning Labs work properly. I was a little, I gotta admit, I was a little nervous about that not working for us, but uh, yeah, it was, went quite smoothly. So I'm very happy about that. All right, we got some more folks joining in. You can use the, the QR code on, on the screen or you can use the embedded app that, that should be open on the right side to join in. Give you about right. another, oh, we got a few more people joining in yep. about another 15, 20 seconds before we get started. Yep. All right, I think they, I think we're good to go. All right, so here we go. So good luck to you all. Good luck. I'm gonna start the quiz. So what type of widget did we just build? Was it a page widget, a headless widget, a header widget, or a bicycle kick widget? Ah, we were, they were paying attention. All right, 100%. I like that. All right, that's not bad. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll get a little bit more complicated here with some of these next questions. Yeah. So, got our leaderboard. Oh, we got our, our leaderboard here. Yeah, so the quicker you answer, the higher up on the leaderboard you go. Yeah, so it's really close, mind. though, so here we go. <laughs> All right, where do these widgets appear? Do they appear on the agent desktop, in the control hub, or on the developer portal? All right, and time's up. All right, so let's everyone see. thinks it's the agent desktop. What is it? Is it the... was the agent desktop. Yes. All, All right. right. Good job, everybody. <laughs> what technology was the header widget built with? Visual Basic, C plus plus, Python, or Web Components? Oh, we tricked some people here on this one. Yeah. I think that Python web server may have thrown people off a little bit. But yes, it was web components. You know, like I said, we you can build those those widgets with web components, and uh, you know they don't have to just live in Contact Center. They can be used throughout. That's what's so great about web components. All right. Which file did we edit to configure the desktop layout? Agent JSON, layout JSON desktop JSON or WebXCC.json. So we know it was a JSON file. Ah, I got some people on this one. All right. And... <laughs> layout, layout JSON was the file that we pulled in from the, in the repo, yep, that we ed edited and re-uploaded. Okay. All right, final one. What are the two user types needed to build and test the widget? So this is a multiple choice answer. Administrator, guest user, remote caller, or an agent? All 
Uh, I didn't trick anybody with that one, did we? <laughs> Nailed it. Perfect. Indeed. Perfect. All right. All right. Ready for the leaderboard? So yep. Here it is. Ah, uh, congratulations, Rickard. Excellent. Uh, five out wow. of five. But... So, which file did we edit? It was the hardest question yet. <laughs> Uh, we'll be reaching out to you with your with your code uh, for for the WebEx store. So we're really excited, uh, and I think uh, thank you for joining us. Do we have we have time? We, oh, real quick time for Q and A. Do we have some Q and A? Let's see here. Um, we did have some, and we've been answering them uh, through Slido. We have a couple minutes okay. so we can go through those really quick. Uh, can you repeat the VS Code plugin? Joe, is that you that had the VS Code plugin? Yeah, I, I put the one that I use in chat. Um, okay. So it, it's in the, the chat to everyone there. You should be able to see the one that I use personally. And then I also put a link up for one of the, the online versions of the JSON viewer that I use. Okay. And for people watching uh, later, we'll have those links on the in the community forums on the thread for this webinar. Awesome. Another question is, what is the correct term to use here? Widget or gadget and why? Uh, it's they're, widget. They're, yeah, they're, they're called widgets. Uh, I don't know if I, I may have called, I think uh, gadgets refer the finesse desktop, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the previous version, which is not part of the WebXCC. Okay, perfect. Uh, any tip to easily navigate through the layout JSON to add custom widgets and gadgets without breaking things? Yeah, I think we went over yeah. that particular question. Yeah, it's it is a it's a massive file. It is you know just making sure that. Uh, whatever code editor you're using does that JSON validation, just making sure it's a valid JSON file will help a lot because sometimes you'll add extra brackets or commas and not even realize it at the time. All right, and time for one more is, is there an, uh, a desktop layout can only be associated with one team, right? So having different desktop layouts requires having different teams, right? Correct. Yeah. And the, the layout file actually has uh, three different sections for the different types of users. So you can, if you have different types of users, you can use one layout file. But if you want to have the same agents to have same agents to have different layouts, then yeah, you'll have to create those multiple layouts in the control hub. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, everyone. Congratulations to you all, and congratulations to Rickard for winning today's uh, prize. Thank you for joining us, and be sure to pop over to the WebEx Developer Community Forum at cs.co forward slash WebEx Developer Community, where you can connect with the developers and support team in case you run into any challenges while building or running apps on WebEx. We also love your feedback, so please do fill out the survey. And with that, have a restful one, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Bye.